What's up everyone, this is Skytech Freak and if you guys saw my last video then you already know that today I'm going to be attempting my first SFX or small form factor PC build and we're going to be doing that in the Cooler Master NR200P right here and it is going to be a vertically mounted build so we're going to replace this mesh panel on the left side with a glass panel so that you can see the GPU vertically mounted and uh, I just thought before we get into the build Let's take a look at some of the parts that I intend to use and sort of the reason why I chose the parts that I did. So of course, uh, as you saw from my last video, you know that the star of the show is going to be the GE Force RTX 3070 FE or the fan edition. And the reason I'm really excited about using this card and this is something I mentioned in the unboxing of this card as well, is that I think this is the most ideal card to put in SFX builds, especially because I'm going to be vertically mounting it. And so it's not a card that's very, very power hungry that will generate a lot of heat in that compact space and will be difficult to cool. But at the same time, it's far from a weak card. So I'm very excited to sort of throw that in there and see how it performs. Uh, and then the next two important parts that are going to run the system of course are the motherboard and the cpu so i have the intel 10th generation core i5 10400 and the reason i have an, a 10th generation instead of an 11th generation cpu is just because it's difficult to find the 11th generation in stock and out of the 10th generation the 10400 is definitely the least heat generating but at the same time can keep up with the performance that will not bottleneck a 3070 or will barely bottleneck the 3070 so that's why i've paired uh, this CPU with this graphics card and then uh, for the ITX motherboard because we will need an ITX motherboard since it's an SFX PC build and the NR200P only supports ITX motherboards and ITX uh, SFX power supplies which are we have the MSI MAG B560i Gaming Edge Wi-Fi motherboard and the reason I chose this is because uh, this is one of the boards that's using MSI's sort of technology that allows you to use two NVMe drives even with uh, 10th generation Core i5 so basically all other B560s and uh, Z590s, what they do is that they only allow you to use one NVMe slot if you're using a 10th generation processor and you're able to use two or more if you're using an 11th gen processor. But if you're using a 10th generation processor, you can only use one of those uh, two PCIe slots. This board has two slots, but MSI has also got a sort of board switching technology that will allow you to use both PCIe slots even with uh, a 10th generation i5. And, while we'll only be using one in this build, it's something that's important, I thought, in terms of future proofing, especially if I plan to stick with the Core i5. Another reason why I went with the B560i instead of a B460 or a Z590 is because it's cheaper than a B490 or a B590 ITX board, but at the same time, it also allows memory overclocking, not only for 11th gen uh, Intel CPUs, but also for 10th gen CPUs, and we will be using uh, overclocked RAM uh, at the speed of 3200 megahertz from ballistics. So that's the reason I went with this motherboard and this CPU combination. Anyways, I didn't have a 240 AIO at hand. I have a 360 AIO and a 280 mm AIO. Uh, and so I was more than happy to just use the stock cooler that comes with the Core i5 because I know that this Core i5 10400 doesn't generate a lot of heat and it's perfectly, uh, perfectly fine with the stock cooler. But I didn't I wanted to give it just a little bit more headroom and so this is basically it's basically a replacement stock cooler but it's a little beefier the heatsink's a little stronger and it's cooler masters i think it looks better than the stock cooler and i don't think that's a very high bar i think anything looks better than the stock intel cooler but i just thought that it's a cheap upgrade that i can do and that will fit with the gpu vertically mounted so while i have other tower cpu coolers i couldn't use any of them because they won't fit if you vertically mount your gpu which i do want to do with the 3070 here and so we're going to have to use a low profile cpu cooler that blows in towards the fan and so this is one of the ones that was recommended at a cheap cost but at the same time uh can do a little bit better than the stock cooler and also i figured that since we're using the cooler master case we might as well go as far as we can with the cooler master products and so in that same vein we will be using four of the mf 120 halo fans to be cooling this and uh, the reason i'm not using the two sickle sickle flow fans is that even though they might perform a little bit better i wanted the case to sort of really look good i wanted there to be enough rgb bling in it because it's sort of a showcase build as well we also have um two RGB 200 Pro LED strips that I'll be putting at the top and the bottom of the case. One more thing I wanted to mention is that I will be using the Razer Chroma controller in this build. Now, I've made a video about the Razer Chroma controller before. It basically allows you to use all these ARGB accessories. So 
the RGB 200 Pro uh, LED strips and the master fan, all four of the master fan MF Halo 120s will be connected to the Razer co uh, Chroma controller. And then we can basically control the lighting effects of all of these ARGB components through Razer Synapse and also go ahead and sync them to any Razer products that I do have. And as you can see, my keyboard, my mouse, my mouse pad are all Razer products. And so just for a standard universal RGB implementation, I think Razer Synapse will do a really good job because I like the software. But if I have all these other ARGB controllers also synced to my keyboard, my mouse uh, and my mouse pad, and you can see even the mic I'm using is actually a Razer Siren Mini. So I'm a big Razer fan. I have a headset that's behind all these boxes right now that will also sync to that same uh, Razer Chroma RGB. And so I figured that since I have this controller lying around, it's best that I use it to sync with all these peripherals and at the same time sync all these ARGB components to it as well. Now the last component of this build is going to be of course the SFX power supply that I spoke about earlier when I was talking about uh, the ITX motherboard and I wanted to stick to Cooler Master as much as we could because the CPU cooler is going to be Cooler Master obviously the case is Cooler Master and the fans the ARGB MF Halo fans which are beautiful fans are going to be uh, Cooler Master now Cooler Master does make a 650 a 750 and an 850 SFX uh, power supply but those were all out of stock and I wanted to use Corsair because I had replacement cables for these Type 4 or Gen 4 Corsair uh, power supplies and as you know that the RTX 3070 uses a really ugly adapter and I wanted this build to look as good as it can and so I had an RTX 12 pin to Corsair PSU sort of braided cable that I wanted to use in this build and so I figured for all those reasons uh, best to go with a Platinum SF600 and so yeah that's the rationale behind why I'm using the parts that I'm using so let's get down to building now.